Tanya and I decided to get out of the crowded city of Tbilisi, get on a Mashutska, which are the, uh, oh, and there she is, to, uh, which are these uh, Soviet era uh, buses, mini buses that ply all the roads of Georgia and uh, took a two hour trip up here into the a little bit into the mountains to the uh, historic town of Borjomi, where the famous Borjomi mineral water is bottled. Well, it's famous around here, it may not be where you are, but it is uh, uh, late fall right now. And um, let me just show you how pretty it is. We'll show you again tomorrow morning uh, when the uh, light is a little better for the all the leaves and so forth. This is the uh, the view from our hotel room it's you know it's village life but it is just it is so uh, quiet and refreshing and it is it's just it's just terrific we're really looking forward we're gonna go out and check it out and see if we can find a um, spa experience uh, Georgian style here in Borjomi here to answer two questions that we've been wondering about. Number one, what makes this town so special? And number two, why are there so many Russian speakers here? Let's see if we can find that out. Well, first of all, Borjomi is the home of the famous, or at least famous in this part of the world, Borjomi water. And it is a mineral water with a certain amount of uh, sparkle to it carbonation and it comes from the mineral springs here in uh, Borjomi which is nestled in the middle of the Borjomi Valley. Borjomi water uh, is said to be very healthy for one and uh, during the Soviet Union times it was well known and popular throughout the Soviet Union and it is today in Russia and it's one of Georgia's major exports of Borjomi water uh, to Russia. Okay, so that sort of explains maybe, uh, you know, why Russian is so widely spoken here. I was amazed. Of course, naturally, Russian is spoken in Georgia because it was part of the Soviet Union. But especially here, uh, English, not so much at all, but uh, lots of Russian. And just in everyday conversation, you hear people speaking, you think, oh, what is that? Is that Russian or is that Georgian? No, it's Russian, all right. So I wanted to dig a little bit deeper and find out what's going on with that. One of the highlights of coming to Borjomi is to take the cure or to take the waters. And a lot of that centers around uh, some of the spas that are here in Borjomi. We are right now outside the Borjomi Palace Spa and Wellness Center, which is one of the most well-known spas and centers here in Borjomi. And uh, Tanya and I went in uh, the other day to see uh, what's going on here. How do, how do you do this? What do, it, it's a, an, a, the spa experience uh, as they do it in, uh, in Europe and in, especially in Eastern Europe is much, much different than what we have ever experienced in the United States. So we picked up a little um, guide, uh, their menu. It's about a, a six page menu that tells you about all their services. And I find out from talking uh, with a couple of people from Kazakhstan who are here for, uh, I believe it's a week or 10 days, uh, how this whole works. First of all, there are consultations. So you have a consultation and then uh, she's, the Kazakh lady told me, you let the uh, people know here what your budget is and then they recommend all of these different treatments and people from Saudi Arabia, a lot of people from Kazakhstan uh, and from other places around the former Soviet Union come here uh, to what is what used to be called a I think still is called a sanatorium, not sanitarium, sanatorium. Okay, so let me just give you an idea of some of the things that they will consult you on. So when you come in for a consultation. Uh, you can either see a therapist, gastroenterologist, cardiologist, urologist, gynecologist, neurologist, uh, orthopedics. Okay, that makes sense. And then they'll have a functional diagnosis. Okay, urinary system, obstetric research, 
vaginal research. I think that misses something in the translation, uh, but the appear part of the abdominal cavity. Not quite sure what that is. And here's one that for 70 lari, which is a, you know the equivalent of about 20 bucks, uh, you get examining secrets of the brain. Well, not sure what that's all about. Uh, uh, then, uh, then they have medical healing procedures, oral irrigation, gallbladder washing out, uh, rinse the bowel with mineral water. Well, I think I can understand that one. Um, and then a number of uh, massages and all sorts of different kinds of washes and, and therapies. Uh, when it gets to physiotherapy, uh, there's magnetotherapy, ultraphonophoresis therapy, there is shock therapy. I, I don't know that that's, I, I hope it doesn't mean what I think it means or what it traditionally means in the West. And then there's spa capsules, there's different mud therapies. How about mud panties? Well, after you've had some vaginal research, just put on a pair of mud panties. I don't know how that's going to work. But anyway, muddy high socks, muddy socks, knees in the mud. That's a treatment. Uh, and then, of course, facial massages, that's fine. And they'll uh, analyze all sorts of things, you know, your blood analysis, the, the feces, your glucose. Okay, well, that all makes sense. But uh, anyway, that's uh, after going through this extensive menu and realizing that we were only here for two days, Tanya and I opted for uh, a massage. Uh, Tanya went for the classical massage. I went for the sport massage, which was only conducted by a man because supposedly if it's sports, you know, the guy has to be really strong. And uh, we had those yesterday and we came away, I think, um, I don't feel... I don't know that we feel any worse afterwards, although I'm a little sore this morning. Uh, it was not kind of the massage that we're more used to. It was a pretty much uh, let's get into it and uh, batch you around quite a bit and uh, see how much pain we can produce. And boy, it really feels good when they stop. Tanya's therapist was Ina from Russia, as she kept uh, telling her. And it uh, appears that she uh, also, she was from Siberia, and now she's come here for a better life in Borgia. This is the uh, sanatorium here, are the uh, several different uh, rooms from the outside. I'm not gonna show you any filming of the inside. I don't think they were gonna, would be too happy about that. Anyway. This is the, the hotel where we stayed here in Borjomi for two nights, right across the, uh, uh, the little lane here from the, the Burjomi Palace. This is the Milano Palace, uh, which uh, doesn't offer all of the spa treatments, but uh, is very convenient for going across the street to the spa. Okay, so I think we've uh, answered our part of our question as to why uh, Russian is uh, spoken here so much is because uh, there were people from all over the Soviet Union that came here and continue to come here uh, to receive these spa treatments. Okay, so that's the attraction of the town. So we've answered that question, but it, it still didn't uh, help me answer completely why Russian is so widely spoken. So I did a little bit of research and uh, here's a little bit more about, about uh, Borjomi. First of all, <clears throat> in uh, uh, Georgia was annexed by Russia in about 1810, and uh, soon after that happened, Russian troops, uh, soldiers came into this area, they discovered the mineral baths, and they occupied the town, and probably they thought this is just a grand place to be stationed, because why not? Uh, you can come down here and enjoy the waters. Well, it didn't take long for the uh, rest of the Russian government and the aristocracy to figure out that these guys had a pretty good thing going here. So um, they came down. Uh, uh, one of their, uh, the one of the Russian viceroys to Georgia came here and uh, essentially replaced the military with civilian control and kind of uh, put this place in control of the aristocracy. So it became uh, a place where all the important uh, uh, Russian royals uh, came here. And then, of course, what happened in um, toward the uh, end of the uh, 19th century, about between 1892 and 95, the Romanovs decided that this was such a great place, they should build a, a summer palace here, which they did. And uh, things were going along just swimmingly until, uh, of course, um, in 1921, uh, the Russian Revolution happened. And, of course, 
uh, they were all uh, thrown out. But they still had that cool palace outside of town, and uh, the uh, communists took that over, and Stalin uh, enjoyed coming here uh, and uh, in, enjoying the waters and that, uh, that nice pad, uh, which went just fine until the Soviet Union uh, dissolved and uh, it went to uh, George uh, uh, Bordromi went into a period of kind of decline started to make build itself back up and now that cool uh, summer palace which unfortunately we can't go to because it's closed up uh, is where the president of Georgia uh, likes to spend uh, some of his time so I think uh, we understand the, the rest of the question as to why Georgia is so widely spoken here. At one time, uh, there were more Russian speakers here than Georgians, actually more uh, um, ethnic Russians here than ethnic Georgians. And obviously those families have stayed here. And so this is why, uh, um, that as far as I can understand, that uh, Russian is so popular here. If uh, any of our uh, subscribers or friends that uh, any of you who are from Georgia or Russia and are watching this, uh, I'd be uh, happy to uh, be pleased to get your comments and see if I'm I'm uh, right or you know other kinds of explanations as to uh, the history of uh, of this fascinating and beautiful town.